Okay, tubers. So I've just about had enough of all the time lapses of me doing the same thing over and over again. I'm trying to make it look interesting, but it's damn near impossible. I got plenty of hours, and as you'd imagine, there's a lot of hours of work that's gone into making this look decent. And you know, there's a bit, a bit of learning there involved, and probably a few mistakes that I won't admit to. But here it goes. I'm going to try and give you a bit of a rundown. So obviously, I've got the, um, the BMS all set up. We've got the old inverter. Um, now this is the, my very first PIP 2424 HS and the gentleman that I sold it to hasn't used it yet. <laughs> he was going to build an off-grid farm and decided against it so I've got that back which is going to lead to some interesting interesting tests. Uh, namely, this pack here is going to go down to the battery shed and I'm going to replace my first ever pack, my 24 volt pack. The pack that I did the 4 hour 1000 watt load test on that's going to come back up here and I'm going to put it here and then I'm going to use that as the basis of a whole heap of is it worth it tests so I can do a couple of four hour live feeds again if people want to actually sit through that again which I sincerely doubt um, but I can, I, can, I can run that same pack all over again six months down the track it's six months shortly I think so that's going to be a really cool test coming moving forward in the next couple of weeks. But I am going to start. Um, I've got 14 long ones. I've got seven of them set up here. So I want to take them down and start. Actually, they're pointless here. They're cool because I'm learning stuff. But I need them down in the shed. I need them working. I need them put into real life situations. So I'm going to do that as soon as possible. If you can see the little software, the Batrium software here, you can see the red bits now. This has got no external power going to it whatsoever. It's all self-contained. So the BMS is running directly off the batteries. And as I said in other videos, um, I had it running off 12 volt. Now it's running off, what is it, 27 and a half volts. And then it'll do, it'll do my, it'll do 60 volts without a problem as well. So there's no need to actually grab a second cell power supply from that. So it's highly efficient. Um, just positive and negative and where it goes. Now at the moment, I've actually got it running the negative terminal here where I should have wired it after the shunt. So I could have actually seen how much power that um, device used. I'm not changing it now. Um, but as you can see on the screen, we've got the red bits here. Now that's actually discharging at 1.7 amps and the red bits change. So because I've got the shunt with the long mons and the watchmon, what the watchmon is saying is we've got idle time so we've got nothing charging and nothing discharging. So what it's doing is saying, ah, stuff it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to balance out the batteries. Now in real world, we're always giving and taking from the batteries. There's never really an idle moment. So this isn't going to come into play all the time. However, it is awfully cool that it's happening now. So I can balance the pack before I put it down there. Um, once I add the pip to it and um, ask the Sparky to come around and actually give me 240 volt to it, I can actually charge this up to the same voltages down there and put it in fairly well matching. So that'll be great. You can see it sort of changing around. Now what this is actually doing is, I've got the software set up in here that these long ones are only operating for 25 seconds. So they're doing 1.7 amps for 25 seconds and then they turn off again. Now what that does is it stops them from overheating and gives each one time to cool down. And if you've noticed, number three hasn't come on at all because that, that cell is at 3.86 volts. So what this will do is this will drag the batteries down to that voltage. Um, also, I talked about doing these cells, the fuses on negative and positive. I've since changed that idea again. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I think it's a bloody brilliant idea to do both sides, but what I didn't consider was the extra strength that, you can't even see it, that that wire on the negative side gives the pack. So I've gone back to that original and only having it single-sided. Uh, obviously, I've got the new bus bars, which I absolutely love. Um, there's not much, there's some very good videos out there. You don't need to see me doing that again. So yeah, and as is also on Facebook, it's all live on the internet as well as now 
even though this is all self-contained and that's wireless, it does actually need this software running on the computer at the moment to feed that up to the net. So that's how I've got that running at the moment. And that link will be below. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's a few other little technical things I'm going to show you in another video tomorrow when I get a little bit of time. Um, but basically, you've got when you get the long ones, you've got to actually turn them on. And when you turn them on, it, um, each one of the long ones has a serial number, and the the, the watchman can actually record 10 years worth of um, data on each one with a serial number. So I love it. Let's get a closer look. Okay, so we've got all the long ones. They're all double zip tied up there, so they're all nice and clean and tidy and well presented. They're secure, they're not going anywhere. Uh, all, the, all the cables up the top are all looped through nice and neat and tidy. And they're all braided uh, with heat shrink at each end. So they're nice and well protected. Uh, I got all the heat shrink all the way up to here. So this one here is responsible for controlling the shunt. Um, and I got a little bit of wire there that should be tucked away. <laughs> now, that's the ne that's the blue ones, the negative cable down to the negative side and the positives here. Now I know it's not ideal not having the same length of um, cable on the positive and negative, but it's not really a reality and it doesn't really, it doesn't work in the real world, let's face it. Especially if you want to look nice, and I am kind of proud about how that's turned out. I do need to tie, tie that in so it's not all hanging, but I've got to go and get stuff to do that. Now there's also one more thing that I have to do. Uh, this little bit comes off the side. Uh, move that across. Now that bit there, um, it's got a, it's got a, um, what do, you, what do you call it? A little switch inside of it, so the software can actually see whether that's on or off. I can upgrade this to a relay. Is it? I think it's called a relay. And the Watchmon can actually turn that off. So if the watchman finds something terribly wrong, it trips a smoke detector or one of the sensors uh, for the one of the, the temperature sensors, high, it can actually turn all the power off to the batteries and it can do it completely remotely. You don't even have to be there. And again, because this is all, all self-contained, external power is not required to make that function happen if you've got it wired that way. It's got two temperature sensors within the long mons. It has got temperature sensors up there. It's got temperature sensors in there. So in this one pack alone, there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen 10, 12, 14, 16 minimum temperature sensors. So that's a really, really safe thing to have within this sort of a setup. Just before you go, guys, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on this software that um, is the Batrian software. One thing I really, really didn't like with the PIP inverter is I couldn't have a look at the software before I actually bought it. So I thought I'd give everybody a bit of a rundown. Um, just looking at it, so basically we got chart, so that's what we've been looking at on live feeds and stuff, uh, hardware. So basically we've got system. Um, I'll just leave it up there, you can pause it, I, I hope you can read that properly. Uh, Selmon. So here we can change a, a lot of the stuff within the Selmons. We can do idle bypass adjust, which is what I set up today, and it's set to 25 seconds there. Shunt bunch of settings on the shunt that you can change again um, again if you plug the USB stick in you can get a lot more stuff done and you can make changes without the USB stick you cannot a um, bit of a security feature I think um, to stop someone remotely logging in uh, what have we got critical there so we got high volt supply low volt supply high ambient low ambient etc etc charging and discharging Thermal, remote, volt view, and temp view. And then we go to telemetry. Um, and then cell info. This is basically where I, I said earlier that this, the serial numbers are all listed on every every longmon, genmon, and um, leafmon. And probably others too that I don't know about. Um, but basically you can see here 19 amp hours have been bypassed, has been burnt off as heat or wasted I think some people have actually said. I don't consider it a waste because I'd, I think you'd waste less power by balancing your, balancing your bank than you would by um, not doing this in the first place I guess. So there's a whole bunch of information there you can extrapolate. 
uh, live statistics, uh, daily session, lifetime, and daily history won't work again because the USB stick's not in there. Uh, menu, go tools, so pretty much self explanatory. Bulk import, that'll actually import a, um, a previous configuration. USB driver install, Wi Fi AP, nice and quick. You click it, away it goes. Um, very quick. Now it's interesting, this little man here, you click on that, it opens up to the help desk and actually shows you through a whole bunch of um, steps on how to do it, how to give, the, how to, you know, deal with that specific screen that you're on. Then we've got software, firmware, snapshot report, really cool. Click on that, you click on extract, and then open folder, and then it gives a snapshot. And then that will allow the technical support if you ever have a major problem or something like that. Very easy way of troubleshooting and getting you, get it, get, getting you back up and going again. So YouTubers, that's all i got for tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed these series of videos. I'm learning a lot. I hope you are too. If you've got any questions, ask them below. Do that like, rate and subscribe thing. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, eh?